All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises on and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and salutations to you, I came out there sincerely pushing the work of the hopeful elect. My name is Awan Gabar, back with another lesson, Lord willing to edify the elect of the nation of Israel. And basically, this one is going to be based off the captive exiles, all right? And um, let me read, let me jump straight to the scriptures. Isaiah 51, verse 14. The captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed, and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should fail. All right, now the captive exile is talking about the Israelites. All right, the Israelites, and starting with the elect, the one-third of the nation of Israel. Okay, because captive and exile, the word exile means to be pushed away from your country or to be exed out of your homeland. All right, so... We were exed out of our homeland during the time of 70 AD, all right? The time of the diaspora when we had to flee Jerusalem, fleeing Roman persecution, and then we fled towards the west coast of Africa into the interiors of Europe and all that. You know, we, we fled throughout the four corners of the world pretty much, hence the word diaspora or di dispersing, okay? And then it says the captive because after our exile, shortly after, you know, a space of time we became captives okay it was a number of time you know a time period where we were refuge in these other lands and then as time you know as time um, went on we had to serve captivity our last and final captivity okay that's why it, it's we're called the captive exile okay now it says the captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed and that's that's the israelites starting with the elect the one third we hasteneth that we may be loosed Okay, that's why we hastening, you know, in these times that we living in, you know, we hope and pray, you know, um, speedily and rapidly that Yahweh Shem Yahweh can come and deliver us from this hell, you know, of course, according to his will, you know, as as it be his will, you know, we pray that Yahweh Shem Yahweh can come and take us out of this captivity, man, you know, this is hell, you know, we living in hell, man, we, we have nothing as a nation, man, you know, I mean, we have, in this, in this world, let me rephrase that. In this world, in this society, we have nothing, okay? Because scriptures does tell you that, um, I know the blasphemy of them would say they are Jews and are not, you know, but the sin of God, no, not that one, excuse me. It says, I know that I work in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, all right? The reason why the scriptures say that, you know, I know your work, tribulation, and poverty, but you're rich is because we're heirs to the kingdom of the Most High. We're heirs to the kingdom of Yahweh Shem Yahushua, which is, that, hence the name Yasharala, he's the prince of the power. You know, so that's why, you know, we hasten in these times because there's nothing for us here in Babylon. All right. So we hasten that we may be loose and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should fail. You know, we don't want to die in this damn pit, man. You know, because all hell is about to break loose in society, man. You know, all hell is about to break loose. This is hell. OK, it's going to be a series of events that's going to take place. That's going to crumble this this um corporation called America. And there's going to be a domino effect that's going to take place throughout the four corners of the earth. All right. And then eventually to end it all is going to be the thermonuclear destruction, ICBM. All right. The Most High prophesied, I mean, the, the prophets prophesied by the word of the Most High that these things were going to happen. All right. So the captive exile hasteneth that he may be loose and that he should not die in a pit, nor that his bread should fail. All right, now from there, I'm going to jump to the book of, um, let me go to Zechariah chapter 9, verse 11. It says, as for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit, wherein is no water. All right, now the blood of the covenant, the blood of the covenant is talking about Yahweh Shai. All right, Yahweh Shai, he's the redeemer. All right, he's the mediator between the new covenant. You know, he's the mediator between... Yahweh, the Heavenly Father, and y um, Yasharala, the Israelites, all right? Now it says, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit. Now that's that's why Yahweh Shai was set up to redeem Israel, to deliver us from out of this pit, you know? Where there's no water, all right? There's no water. This place is a drought. There's no truth in this land, okay? This place is dry, all right? That's what scriptures say, the valley of the dry bones, you know? Now it says, verse 12, turn you to the stronghold. You ye prisoners of hope, even to the day I do declare that I will render double unto thee. Now we the, the strongholds of this Bible, all right, this truth, the understanding, the knowledge, the wisdom, understanding. 
our hope. This is what we turn into, man. This is what gives us hope. This is what keeps us driven. This is what keep this is what keep us going in our daily lives. When we wake up in the morning, we we wake up and think to ourselves, another day in hell. All we what we turn to is Yahweh Hashem Yahweh man, and remember that He's gonna deliver us. That's why we prisoners of hope. We we in bondage under the name faith, hope. You know of what deliverance. It says, even to the day I do declare that I will render double unto thee, meaning the Lord is gonna pay back. You know our enemies for what they've done unto us. Verse 13, when I have bent Judah for me, filled the bow with Ephraim, which Judah represents the um the northern kingdom, I mean southern kingdom, and Ephraim represents the northern kingdom, which represents all of Israel. It says, And raised up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece. Greece is talking about Esau. And made thee as a sword, as a sword of a mighty man. Right? Because the Lord the time is coming where the Lord is gonna raise up his men. The 12 tribes of Israel, all right? The house of David, okay? The elect of the house of David. You know, to be a sword, as a mighty man's sword against our enemies, okay? We're going to cut them asunder and tear them apart, according to the scriptures, all right? Verse 14, And the Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning, and the Lord shall blow the trumpet, and shall sound, and shall go with whirlwinds of the south. Okay, now that's the coming destruction that's going to take place. The arrow symbolizes the missiles. All right, because that's what it's all about, man. We living in the time of World War III, the end of the world, the end of Esau's world. World War III is at hand, the brink of World War III. Every time you look at the news, it's something about missile, missile, missile. Come on, man. We in the time of World War III. We got to prepare ourselves for the, for, the, for, the, um, um, for the groom, all right, as brides. It says, and the Lord shall blow the trumpet and shall go with whirlwinds of the south. Now that trumpet, he's, the, the, the trumpet is going to sound, in, you know, as pursuing the, um, the book of Revelation. All right. And the trumpet shall sound, which is going to be the last trumpet, the seventh trumpet, you know, and the whirlwinds is, is the destruction, the, the chariots and the missiles. Verse 15, and the Lord of hosts shall defend them and they shall devour and subdue with sling stones and they shall drink and make noise as through wine and they shall be filled like bowls and as the corners of the altar right so the lord is going to defend the elect the israelites all right the lord did not is not coming to save the whole world you know the whole world does not need to be saved the only group of people that need to be saved are the israelites and once the israelites are set up in order all these other nations are eventually gonna you know after a thousand years of slavery all these other nations are gonna be happy that the so-called white man ain't in rulership no more man that's after a thousand years of slavery though okay because these nations gotta serve slavery too okay and after their sentence of a thousand years of slavery they're gonna pay tribute unto us all right we still gonna be ruling over them we're gonna be the lord willing we the elect we're gonna be the elites over these other nations and esau is gonna be destroyed after a thousand years man all right you edomites all right you so-called caucasians as you call yourself it says and they shall drink and make a noise as through wine. All right, the wine symbolizes that destruction. And they shall be filled like bowls and as the corners of the altar. And the Lord their power shall save them in, in the day as a flock of his people. For they shall be as stones of a crown, lifted up as an ensign upon his hand. Now stones of a crown is precious. Okay, you, you get a crown, a, a king, a majestic king with royal attributes and that ruling class mentality, which is Yahweh Shai, all right? A king always sets stones in their, in their crowns, you know, to symbolize that glory, you know, to make it stand out, to show that they're in power, man. And that's how the Lord is going to symbolize us, man, as stones upon a crown. You know, as is written in the scriptures in our second Ezra, that the Lord is going to crown his elect. Verse 16. I mean, verse, um, yeah, verse 17. For how great is his goodness, and how great is his beauty. Corn shall make the young men cheerful and new wine the maids. All right. Now in the kingdom of heaven is going to be glorious, man. You know, that's why we hasten to be loose because we have nothing to look forward to in Babylon. You know, but death, you know, these bodies ain't nothing, man. These bodies in this kingdom, these bodies are made to die, man. From the time we're born, we're, we're just set up to die. You know, we're set up. Esau set us up to die from the day we were born. Us Israelites, man, you know. You get kids in this society and take them to the clinics. You know, they come out, they come out their mother's womb. Esau takes them straight to the 
to the cleanup room or the nursery room, whatever you want to call it, and start shooting them up with shots. You know, all type of shots, 10 shots, at least 10 shots. These babies leaving the hospital with 10 shots, man. You know, 10 shots, 10 doses of poison. You know? Come on, man. You know, we, hey, that's why the Lord say he's going to hasten, you know, these times. He's going to speed up time for the elect's sake. Because if, 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 yo, man, if this thing wasn't true, then that means we would, we would all die. We just waiting to die. You know? But the Lord is going to deliver his elect, man. All right? From the clutches of this damn devil, Esau. All right? The mad scientist. All right? Next and last scripture I want to get is Isaiah 61, verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to, blind, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prisons to them that are bound. Alright? The Spirit of the Lord is upon the men of the Lord, man. The elect. The prophets out there that are, that are doing the work. You know, sincerely and praying and hoping that they of the elect. Because the Lord hath appointed, you know, his men to preach good tidings to the meek. Now the meek is the lowly. All right, the Lord is coming for the lowly. He's coming to deliver the lowly, man, not the proud. All right, he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. All right, now how, how does the brokenhearted get binded up? Through this word, man. All right, because prior to hearing this truth, man, you know, we, we, hey, we see no hope in this kingdom. We see no, no, no end to this kingdom. It's just work, you know, work, go to work, come back home, sleep, do what you got to do, and repeat. What, 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 what end to it is that, man? It's a continual cycle that the Lord is about to break that chain, that cycle, man. All right? To proclaim liberty to the captives. You know, to proclaim that freedom to the captives, man. That's why it's important for us to preach. You know, to let our people know, the elect of our people know that our captivity is almost up, man. You know, to give them hope, man. To give them a reason to keep on driving, to keep on going, to keep on pushing. You know, that's why we're here for each other, man. You know, to speak and comfort and exhort each other, man. You know, you know, come on, man, you know. Verse, it says, um, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. You know, we're bound in this, this prison, man. You know, we're bound in this kingdom. We're bound in this captivity, this queendom, this hellhole. You know, and the opening symbolizes these scriptures, man. You know, the kingdom of heaven. This Lord, the scriptures say, knock it, it shall be open unto you. You know? So the truth is open unto us, and that's our freedom. Scriptures say the truth shall make you free. All right, so we free from Esau's bondage. So ain't nothing he could do to keep to put us in captivity, man, mentally. All right, because spiritually and mentally we're free from this damn devil, you know. And then people who come into the truth and they go back into the world, they are um, like the scriptures say they 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 return unto their vomit, you know. And then they um I forget how it go, but they basically turn back into the to their captivity, so to speak, you know. It says, um, verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, and the day of vengeance of our power, to comfort all that mourn. All right, now who are we mourning? All right, hey, may it, to be exact and literal, the men of Great Millstone and the brothers that are like mine, you know, doing the same thing of, you know, that the brothers in Great Millstone from the apostles and the elders on down, we're mourning. We're mourning. All right, that's why we always seem, oh, you guys are always angry, oh, you guys are always complaining, oh, you guys are this, you guys are that. you damn right we this and that, we that, man. We're in hell, man. We're mourning, all right? We in, we in hell. We got a damn, we got a homosexual, you know, race of people, devils ruling over, ruling over us. you damn right we're mourning, all right? We in the land of our captivity. Of course we're mourning, you know? It says, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion... To give unto them beauty for ashes, the because ashes symbolizes what you know lamenting. You know, so the oil of joy for mourning. You know, and oil oil symbolizes joy. Right now, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Now the men at Great Millstone from the apostles on down, we're in heaviness, man. You know, we in heaviness. You know, our spirits are you know laden with the with the burdens of this world. And what, what breaks us from that is these scriptures. The knowledge, wisdom, understanding of the Most High. Reading these scriptures. Studying these scriptures. Making videos and watching videos. Fellowshipping with the brothers. You know? Being brotherly to brothers, man. That's what relieve us from this hell. You know, from this spirit of heaviness. Okay, it says that they might be called trees of righteousness and the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified, man. 
All right. Now the Lord is going to plant us back into Jerusalem, into into the land of Israel, our our holy land. All right. And ultimately, the whole world is going to be ours, man. The whole glo um, the glory of all these galaxies, planets, you know, is going to be the ours, man. You know, because it's Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is, is his, is theirs. And we're heirs to the throne of the kingdom of he heaven as Israelites, man. Lord willing of the elect of the nation of Israel. So it all it's all going to trickle down to us. We're going to inherit that, man. You know? And that's why the captive exile hastened it to be loose. And with that, I'm going to say Shalom. And Lord willing, brothers, edified. Shalom.